Welcome back to the channel. Today is a request and it was to discuss plantar fasciitis, something that you might have had and you know all about it, or you might have had a heel pain or an arch of the foot pain and you haven't actually realised that that's what it's been. It's been plantar fasciitis. So I always have to say, no surprise, I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. I am not a physiotherapist, I'm a massage therapist, so all I'm doing is just discussing with you some of the basics that you might want to know, but always go for a diagnosis, use this video for information purposes, and go to a medical professional for specific advice for your condition, and don't self-diagnose, because you might think you've had it and you didn't, or you might not think you've got it and you do. Does that make sense? Hope so. <laughs> so, plantar fasciitis, what you need to know is, it's very common, it can be incredibly painful and in simple terms it is a form of heel pain or an inflammation on the bands on the arch of the foot, the underside of the foot. Now the main cause is overstretching or overuse of the foot. Um, it is basically inflammation of the thick band of tissue that's on the underside. It's tiny tears in the fascia, which again is the band of tissue. And the bands form your arch and they give support to your foot. So you've got three bands on the underside. It really does hurt to walk on it when you've got plantar fasciitis. You know all about it or you'll get like a severe shooting pain in your heel. Now it's called this, called plantar fasciitis, because this thick band of tissue that runs across, across the bottom of each foot it's connected to your heel bone. Well, it basically connects the heel bone to the toes. It's known as a plantar fascia. Itis means inflammation, which is how you come to plantar fasciitis. It's not got one direct cause, and a lot of people will argue over what causes it. Some people will say there is no known specific cause. But if you've got a kind of stabbing pain near or on the heel, that's when you might think to yourself, I could be worth getting a diagnosis here from a doctor or from a physio. What happens, which is no surprise, is it tends to get more common with age. And when you're over 40, that can be when you start to find that it might be more common to see plantar fasciitis in people. It can also be really common if you've already got existing issues like flat feet or problems with your arches. And they would call that mechanical issues. Um, it can also be people that, what, for whatever reason it is, put a lot of pressure on their heels. So it could be someone that stands a lot in their job. Um, hairdressers can get it really commonly. It can be runners, it could be dancers. Basically, if you put a lot of pressure on your heel, there is a fair chance that you might be in line to develop plantar fasciitis at some point. But I hope you don't. Looking at treatments, um, you want a diagnosis first because you need to make sure that it is what you've got. It could be something else and you think you've got it. So make sure you get a diagnosis. Again, you're looking at the doctor or a physio. Now, there's quite a lot of things that people do and I would recommend once you know that you've got it, doing your own research. But there are a lot of handy things that people swear by. It'll be different for you, but you might find something that absolutely does the trick. Number one, there are so many great physios online, so if you can't get to a physio specifically, you might want to look at one. You know I love people like Bob and Brad. There are so many different physios online. A lot of people will pick up marbles with their toes, so I don't have any marbles to hand, but you know that squeezing motion when you're trying to pick something up? This isn't a marble, but this is my acupressure stick. So if this was a marble, look, I'm rubbish at this, but I've got my socks on, so I've not made it easy for myself. But you know that mechanism of trying to pick something up, so pretend that's a marble? So you could try to pick up something like marbles with your toes because this stretches and flexes the muscle. You can also use the rice method. Now I'm coming back to this, so I'll just leave it here. Have you heard of the rice method? So that's resting the area. So it'd be resting the underside of the foot and the heel. I is icing the area to reduce inflammation. The C is to compress or put a compress on the area to reduce swelling. And the E is to elevate the area because that helps with recovery. Now, different timings for different people. So that's why it's good to seek medical advice. Some people would say 20 minutes. But again, you've got to make sure that you know what's working for you. You want to get well and you want it to be optimal. So make sure that you take advice so you know exactly if you're using the rice method, your timings. Now, fitness band. So I'll move this to the side. A fitness band or a towel. And what you can do is keep the heel on the floor, get it comfortable, and then stretch the foot 
and then bring it back down again. Now, again, this could be the fitness band, it could be a towel, and what you're doing is you're keeping your knee straight, so you've got that 90 degree angle, you're keeping your heel on the floor, and you're moving your foot up and down, and the theory is, again, that this is really helping to stretch out those sore bands, that tightness. If it hurts, though, you wouldn't do it. And this is where I think a physio would be really handy because the fitness band or the towel can be very effective, but only if you know what you're doing. Then you've also got heel raises. So again, the knees at a 90 degree angle. You can put your hands on your knees just to make sure that you're doing it correctly. And then you're very gently raising your heels. If you need to, you can sit down or ideally you can stand or you could hold on to a chair. And the heel raises will help to build your calf muscles and that can really help with your foot mobility. So again, you would do this to the specifications of maybe again a physio that would help guide you because they would take a look at your body mechanics. They would take a look at exactly what's wrong and say, right, I recommend you do this exercise and you do it this way. And then the last one is a foot roller or for me, I've got my acupressure stick, which can double as a foot roller. And if you don't have one, you can use a ball like a tennis ball. And the theory is that this helps to stretch out and massage that underside of the foot. And that can feel very soothing. It can really relieve the tightness. And I don't know about you, but when I do a movement like this, I feel all the crunching and all of the different, the needs basically to stretch out that underside of the foot. I can really feel that cracking and crunching. For me, there's no pain because I don't have plantar fasciitis, but it actually feels very good, very relaxing. So this is just, again, a guide, some information on what you can do if you've got what you know to be plantar fasciitis or if you've got arch pain, heel pain and you're not 100% sure, go and get a diagnosis, take some medical advice. But again, thank you for asking for these requests. If I can do them, I will. Always happy to help. Let me know if you find it interesting. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon.